Hi there, I'm with Emma Duso, who is one of our international gauchos at UCSB, and he is also a player on our men's basketball team. Thank you so much for being here today. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You have such a great smile. You're making me smile. <laughs> <laughs> um, so why don't we just start with the basics? Um, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, my name is Amadou. Um, I play, I'm from Mali, West Africa. Um, I started playing basketball when I was 13 and I moved here to United States when I was uh, 15. So uh, I've been in the U.S. for quite a while now. Um, and I lived in uh, Northern California, uh, just a couple hours away from here um, for the past, from my high school days. And um, when I started college, I moved here to Santa Barbara, so. Okay, wow, that's so interesting. So you had a little bit of um, experience going to high school in the U.S. And then yeah. I'm wondering how, how did you end up choosing UCSB? Uh, well, the, the process, the recruiting process for basketball is um, a lot different from uh, the academic part, um, but I ended up choosing UCSB mainly because of the, the basketball aspect of it and also Later on, I realized that UCSB is such a great school and stuff like that. So it made it a lot easier to um, to choose the school because of the the ac academic wise and and everything else. So yeah. Wow, awesome! So it's kind of like UCSB chose you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's great. Okay, um, so. First of all, congratulations on making it to March Madness and the uh, finals. You'll have to excuse me because I am not privy to all the athletic terminology. Uh, <laughs> or no maybe some... I'll help you along <laughs> But from my understanding, from someone who doesn't quite understand sports in general, <laughs> um, it just seemed like it was a big deal. I had some colleagues in my office that were so excited and so proud. You know, it's pretty rare for um, one of our international students to get a lot of media attention. So we were really hyped up. So of course we were rooting for you and just seeing you, you know, in local news media and all that. Um, it, it was just really fantastic seeing, seeing all that. Um, I want to dig a little bit more into your basketball a little later on. Um, but um, so I'm gonna circle back to that. I wanted to ask um, more questions about your early life. So what was your experience like growing up in Mali? And did you ever imagine that you would one day play, be playing basketball in California? Um. I mean, growing up uh, in Mali was a lot different than um, a lot of kids who grew up in the U.S. Um, but when I was growing up, I used to play soccer, so I never um, – I played soccer all the way till I was 13. Um, I picked up a basketball right around before I turned 14. So, um, you know, I never imagined, you know, moving from Mali to here to play basketball. Um, you know, it's just, it was one of those things that just like happened. Um, just, you know, it's, it, some people say it's your destiny, but um, I, I don't, like, I can't, I can't really put it into words because uh, everything just happened so, so quickly for me starting basketball and, um, you know, a year later moving here and, you know, it's just, everything was just fast. And, but, you know, I'm always, you know, grateful for, all the opportunities and that basketball has brought into my life and stuff like that. So it's been, it's been an amazing ride so far. Do you mind my asking, uh, did, was it basketball that brought you to the U S um, or did you move to the U S um, for family reasons? And do you have any family here in the U S with you? Um, mainly I moved here because of basketball reasons. Um, also as um, the opportunity has given me to further my education and stuff like that. Um, but I have um, my uncle that lives here. Um, but the rest of my family are still back in Mali. Wow. So, Do you get to visit them? 
Uh, I haven't visited back home since I moved here due to like reasons, different different reasons. Um, um, my high school years, um, I was so focused on schools and stuff like that, trying to uh, start um, speaking English and you know just figuring out um, the culture and um, you know just trying to get used to uh, the U.S. and everything else. So I didn't. I didn't really think about visiting back um, my first two years, but around my junior year in high school, I wanted to go visit, but there was a, a crisis back home and my parents told me not to visit um, because of all the stuff that were going on back home and stuff like that. Um, but when I moved here, basketball even ramped up a little more and school and stuff like that so it was harder to to go back um with everything that is going on and stuff like that and last year i wanted to go back and i had everything and everything ready like my plan everything was set up but i couldn't go because of covid and the year prior to that i couldn't go because of my my passport expired and it took a year to like get a new passport and stuff like that. So there was a lot of little reasons here and there that, um, that you know, enabled me to go back and visit. Um, but I'm so grateful for, for, you know, all the opportunities and everything that, you know, basketball has brought into my life and stuff like that, so, yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for being so open and sharing that with me. I know a lot of international students and scholars are really far from home. And as you mentioned, there's a lot of logistical challenges in being away from your family and being able to visit them. And on top of that, you know, the coronavirus yeah. really impacted a lot of um, students. Like, should they stay? Should they go? Obviously an athlete like you, it requires you to be here. So yeah. you had to make, or sometimes didn't have a choice. Um, yeah. It sound, to me, it sounds like you have a lot of drive and focus and self-discipline, which is amazing. Um, but as you might imagine, so many students deal with feelings of homesickness and missing their family, especially during tough times. Um, have you experienced feelings like that? And when you do, um, like wh what are some things that you do to like kind of keep your chin up, I guess we could say? Yeah, usually, um, I mean, I get those a lot. Um, sometimes I just, I would just be sitting around just thinking about home and stuff like that, my friends. Um, you know, with with the great technology these days, it's easier to get in touch with people. So I was just, um, I would call most of the times, usually with time difference, I would just leave a voicemail or something. And I get, I get their call back the next day. Um, you know, I'm able to talk with, pretty much my friends and my family uh, that way whenever I want. So um, on that, it's been, it's been, technology has been, you know, a great factor and just helping making that a little easier on me, so. Mm -hmm. That's true. Technology does a huge role in allowing us to stay connected. Yeah. Um, well, for your sake and your family's sake, I truly hope you're able to visit home soon. Things are starting to look up, um, yeah, you know. We're keeping an eye on how the coronavirus is, you know, doing in terms of the U.S., but also globally, internationally. Um, yeah. But yeah, again, I hope you're able to visit home really soon. Yeah, me too. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a lot different when I go back, but I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully this pandemic is over soon. So I could. Yeah. Could, yeah. Um. Okay, switching gears a little bit. Um, I saw that you're a global studies major. What um, made you choose that? Um, I think I was just interested in a lot of, you know, global global issues and stuff like that, like equalities and, um, you know, the climate change and stuff like that. Um, I think that's why, that's one of the main reasons why I chose that because I just feel, I just, I just think those are interesting topics and um, that I feel that they need that, you know, people need to know about those kind of stuff. So 
I think that's one of the main reasons why I chose uh, to be a global studies major. That's awesome. Um, so I was trying to save this question for last, but I can't help myself but asking like, where do you see yourself going in life? You know, you know, right now, obviously your main, one of your main passions and pursuits is basketball. Do you see yourself continuing basketball? It seems like you're also interested in possibly like global relations or something like that. And those two things can, you know, inter connect with each other. Sometimes athletes have such a great platform to raise awareness around issues. I'm asking really high mileage questions here, but um, just so curious, like how, like, what do you see yourself doing? Uh, well, in the future, uh, you know, I want to keep, you know, keep playing basketball and, you know, hopefully use my platform and advocate um, some of these issues that I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, I think this, you know, basketball really give like everyone, uh, you know, every athlete uh, a voice and, um, and they can address it whenever they want, however they want. So I think, um, you know, moving forward, um, you know, you know, if I get the chance to play uh, professionally and stuff like that, hopefully I will have a, even a bigger platform to address some of these issues and stuff like that. So, yeah. That is so wonderful. Um, I can't wait to see what you get into in the future. All right. So, um. Finally, last but not least, I would like to circle back to the basketball itself, because I think being an international student, but also being an international student who's also an athlete um, is such a unique experience that you have. Could you tell me what it's your, walk me through your experience of being a player on the men's basketball team and like, were there any challenges that you experienced? experienced as an international student I do know that you had experience um you know going to high school in the U.S. um but I'm just curious like what was it like when you first joined the team um getting to know the other players um you know anything like that um I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna speak from my high school experience I think that would make more sense and mm -hmm. because in high school, when I first when I first started high school, um, my high school was almost like a like an after school program where a different um, a different like kids from all over the U.S. and all over the world would come and um, play basketball together. Uh, it was it was an interesting setting. Um, I got to meet a lot of people from a different part of the U.S. and um, just learning uh, the culture and, you know, the culture of basketball, obviously, and just learning how uh, different kind of players, how, what they do in their hometown or, and what they do together as a collective. It was, you know, it was interesting um, getting to know that. And on top of that, in high school, when I first started, um, I didn't speak any English. So it was, it was a lot harder for me um, to understand some of the some of the concepts and stuff like that but I had uh, a coach that spoke French and and I'm I was able to communicate with him um, throughout the practice till I was able to pick up on the language um, but it was an amazing experience um, you know a lot a lot of you know eye-opening um, situation that had happened. Uh, from high school to to right now so I'm appreciative to um, you know all those experiences and hopefully have uh, many more experiences to come so wow that is so cool like what are the odds that your coach in high school spoke French which yeah. is your native tongue in Mali or one of the language spoken yeah language is that, spoken there yeah yeah, French is one of the languages spoken in Mali. Um, my coach is, he was from France, so it was easier for him to communicate with me on that. Um, and it was really cool. Uh, I was, I think I was lucky. Otherwise, my my experience here would have been pretty bad, uh, not knowing how to speak uh, English and, you know, having to deal with, you know, the language barrier. But him being around uh, the team really helped me 
um, you know, getting a, you know, getting a head start almost, um, you know, getting used to the basketball and, you know, the culture. So I picked up a little, a lot from him. So it was amazing having him on my corner, helping me out in high school and stuff like that. That is awesome. That really warms my heart a bunch. Um, it's just feels like something that would be so comforting to have someone that can speak your language, but also keeping in mind that there are some students who come here and don't meet someone who learn yeah. their language. Yeah. And okay. Yeah, that is true. And also in high school, I had I had friends. They actually some of them are here. Um, one is from Japan. He he was in high school. Um, he had you know similar uh, situation as me. For him, it was school, so he didn't. You know, he had to go through, you know, learning the, uh, you know, the language and, you know, getting used to people and stuff like that. So it was really difficult for him because he didn't have anybody, you know, who speaks Japanese and helped him out um, with whatever he had, he had going on. So, wow. yeah, I see, I see the perspective. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Um, so let's fast forward a little bit to the present. So your time in at UCSB, um, what's it like, what's the dynamic like with your, your teammates and your coach? And, um, also tell me what it's, what it was like for you to go to March Madness and were you aware that you were getting media attention and what was that like for you? Um, you know, I've, I think our you know, team dynamic is really good here at UCSB. Um, you know, we have great coaches uh, and great people all around, um, you know, from different places of, of the world and obviously in the U.S. Um, you, know, it was, you know, it was a lot of fun, um, you know, being around uh, my teammates, especially in, in, in quarantine, you know, we weren't, we weren't allowed to see anybody. So it's like only each other. So... It was even more fun because all we had is each other, and you know, when you you miss someone or wanna, you know, play around with, interact with people, you always go to your teammates, and it was a lot of fun. It was it was almost like a a bond, a, you know, a different bond that we had with each other and stuff like that. And you know, winning and you know going to March Madness was uh, you know amazing experience. Um, a lot of a lot of lot of lot of college players, you know, don't get don't get a chance to um, go play at, at the tournament, and we had a chance to do that. I think, you know, it was amazing and an amazing experience overall. And um, you know, some some events say it's, it's it's once in a lifetime, so you know, it was it was really cool being there and stuff like that. So, wow. Um... Yeah, it sounds like you had a really great support system and I agree with you completely. The coronavirus had a lot of negative impacts, but I think one silver lining is that I think it helped people really connect more deeply with the those that we were allowed to interact yeah. with yeah. daily yeah. for health and safety reasons. So again, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Um, okay, I don't want to keep you for too much longer. So um, just to wrap this up, do you have any parting words for, it could be your fellow gauchos, um, fellow international students, um, any words of advice for them, anything like that? Um, well, I think my, my word of advice would be, you know, stick into what you do best and, and just keep working and know that um, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, just keep working and taking care of school and, you know, just know that there's always people um, that are willing to help and uh, all, you have, all you have to do is ask. So um, and, you know, thanks to all of them for their support um, throughout our run in, in, the, in the tournament and stuff like that. So appreciate all of them. Again, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.